Coming to you from deep inside the bowels of a great big empty. Get ready for another episode of The Home Defense Show with Skip Coriel. This is Phoenix Coriel. Welcome to the Home Defense Show. Hey folks, welcome to the Home Defense Show. This is your host Skip Coriel. How'd you like that shooting right out of the bat, uh, right out of the box with my son, Phoenix Quinn Coriel. He's an awesome shooting machine. Hold the camera steady, all right? Trying to. Okay, he was shooting a Glock Model 44. Uh, we've, uh, we've cleared this gun. So it's not going anywhere, nothing bad's gonna happen here, no ammo close by. Um, today I wanna talk about something that's controversial. Carrying a 22 caliber pistol for personal protection. Most people aren't gonna do it. I don't do it. Um, but I think these days the average shooter isn't as average as he used to be. Things have changed. Um, my last class, we had like 20 in the class, 10 of them were women, okay? Women do not like large, loud explosions and tons of recoil, especially when they're first starting out. I mean, I, I get so many women, they, they come up to the line, they'll shoot, I had a lady come up uh, just a few weeks ago. She come up, she shot, and she screamed and dropped the gun, okay? It was a nine millimeter. I don't want her to do that, okay? I want her to learn how to shoot on something that is good for her, something that makes her happy, that makes her excited, okay? Remember back when you first learned maybe a sport, maybe a tennis or golf or, or uh, archery, if you suck at it, if you're terrible at it, you're not gonna keep doing it. The 22 allows beginning shooters to master the principles of marksmanship and shooting and to become fairly proficient quickly because I want them to keep shooting, not just today, uh, but tomorrow, a year from now, two years from now, okay? Now, I understand that this doesn't have the same kinetic energy, uh, you know, as a nine millimeter or 40 caliber or whatever, okay? I understand that. Um, and the, as far as the reliability goes of rimfire, Rim fire is not as reliable as center fire in general, okay? I mean, it's gonna depend on, on the gun, uh, it's gonna depend on the ammo and the combination of the ammo and the gun that you're using. But I, I'll, I'll tell you, quite frankly, most malfunctions, even in rim fires, it's the, it's the fault, unless you're talking about a misfire, a bad primer, uh, a malfunction, you're, it, it's bad form. You know, it's bad shooting form, a, you know, tight grip as opposed to a loose grip. You want a tight grip even when you're shooting a 22, even though the recoil isn't there. It, you know, it allows the gun to cycle, eject and reload um, without malfunctioning, without the stove pipes and uh, you know, failure to extract and, and all of those things. So <clears throat> the biggest problem that I see with the 22 caliber is people have bad shooting form and they cause malfunctions. And the, ammo, the rimfire ammo, you'll have more misfires in general. Those are both fixable things for the most part. Certainly the shooting form, the grip, the stance, you can fix all of that. You know, when you're shooting your stance, you get in a good stance, tight grip, you know, G.I. Joe Kung Fu grip, right? Tight grip, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze hard, lock the elbows, lock the wrists, roll the shoulders forward, okay? You do that, this gun's not gonna move, and it's gonna be like it's in a vise. You're not gonna have uh, malfunctions, even with, with the 22. Misfires, well, that's dependent on, on the ammo, okay? 
So certainly you want to you want a higher a, a higher velocity ammunition. You want something you know 1,200 feet per second or higher, uh, so you have enough energy to go through the reloading sequence. But uh, as far as knockdown power, indisputably, yeah, a 22 does not have the knockdown power um, that a 22 Magnum or a 38 or a 9 millimeter or, or any of its larger cousins, okay? Uh, I, I'm not going to dispute that. The problem here, you know, and I was, I was watching a video with uh, John Lovell from Warrior Poet Society. You know, he's uh, one of my one of my favorites, right? He's one of my favorites. And, uh, you know, he was talking about, you know, basic pistol skills, marksmanship skills. And he said, listen, if you got a problem, don't try and compensate or hide the problem or fix the problem. You're moving the camera all over the place. Sorry. Okay. Don't try and fix the problem by getting better gear or different gear or a different trigger or whatever. I, I, I agree with a caveat. It's certainly better to become a, a better shot, but when you first start out, you need to have that success under your belt, okay? You just, you just have to. So when you're starting out, don't worry about that so much. Later on, yeah, we, we wanna work on our shooting problems. But when you're first starting out, better gear is, is not, a, not a bad idea. Gear that's tailored towards you, a gun that, that's, uh, that you can actually hit the target with. Okay, and quite frankly, you know, you, you have these people on the opposite end of the spectrum that say, well, hey, if the caliber doesn't start with a four, it's not big enough. Well, that's hogwash. Okay, most people are shooting a nine millimeter nowadays. That's less than a 40 caliber. But, uh, what we've learned over decades of gunfights is that the size of the bullet is less important than where you put that bullet. If someone gets shot in the face with this 22 caliber, you're gonna stop the threat, okay? So I would say, listen, if you decide to carry a gun like this, and the Glock 44 is, is not a bad gun, okay? It's fairly reliable, it's light, uh, you got a 10 to an 18 uh, round magazine, um, so, you know, there's some good things about it, too. The bottom line is that a lot of people can't carry a higher recoil gun. And for those people, is it better to have no gun or a 22? If you're in that category where maybe you've got carpal tunnel, arthritis, you know, uh, very little upper body strength, weak hands, you know, for, you know, you're, or you're just afraid of the recoil or very recoil sensitive. I'd much rather you had this Glock model 44 and be able to make face shots than to have, you know, a, a, a nine millimeters shield and going all over the place, okay? Marksmanship is very, very important when you're spraying bullets, you know, all over the landscape. So, yeah, marksmanship counts. If, if you're not going to shoot the gun because it's too big or there's too much recoil, get the 22. Stay with the 22 until you can handle something better. And you may never want something better. Okay? So, you know, that's okay. I know some people, are, you're going you're gonna to give me, uh, you know, uh, garbage for saying things like this. But the bottom line is, what's the number one rule to a gunfight? Bring a gun, okay? If it's a 22, it's a 22. If it's a 22, you make you make really good shots, okay? If it's uh, and this is the reason I, I carry the Ruger 57, okay? I carry the Ruger 57, um, despite the fact that it's big and it's big. But for me, it's accurate. I'm going to shoot the gun that I'm most accurate with that feels good to me. I'm recoil sensitive. This has very little recoil. It's got about the same amount of recoil as a 22 Magnum. Okay? So if you're in that camp where you're very recoil sensitive and you're a beginner, go ahead and start out with that 22. You can, six months from now, you can always switch. 
you can switch to a 380 or a 9 mil or whatever you want to do okay but starting out the important thing is that you keep shooting for the rest of your life and if you pick out a big hand cannon uh, I've seen it before folks they, they, they come to class with a 40 or a 9 that their husband gave them and then they shoot it and they say I'm not gonna do this why would I want to do this okay so you do what you got to do to get the job done all right okay um, this is Skip Coriel on home defense show next week I think we're gonna we're gonna talk about the the Ruger 57 because you, you see that big, that red thing right there daddy got a brand new trigger and we're going to talk about it next week on the Home Defense Show. All right. Hey, remember, remember our sponsors, United States Concealed Carry Association. If you're not a member, join. They can protect you legally and help you get good training. Also, Centershot Indoor Gun Range, centershotgunrange.com. Go to Centershot Indoor Gun Range in Door, Michigan, where it's always a perfect 70 degrees. This is Skip Correll on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will see you next week. We're recording. Thank you for joining us this week on The Home Defense Show. Now, get out there and protect the ones you love. We'll see you next week with more of the best in home defense. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle! And it's time for our Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network report. Take us there, Skip. All of us here at Front Lines of Freedom want our listeners to get trained and get armed in that order. We fully support the right to keep and bear arms for all law-abiding families, and we encourage you to find out about the laws governing use of deadly force in your state and follow them to the letter. And of course, don't forget to follow the rules of safety and common sense whenever you're carrying a firearm to protect the ones you love. What's the story this week, Colonel? Well, a 69-year-old Army Special Forces vet stopped a home intruder with the help of his dog and his firearm on April 1st near Los Angeles. The dog alerted the homeowner to the intruder around 5 a.m. by jumping on his chest and growling. As the intruder was standing in the bedroom door when the homeowner fully awoke, however, the trespasser just went into the bathroom, apparently believing the homeowner was still asleep. The veteran retrieved his firearm, pushed open the bathroom door, and said, quote, Do not move, I will blow you away. End quote. The man claimed to be a friend of this homeowner's son, but the veteran still held him at gunpoint until police arrived. You know, Colonel, special forces guy, they're not real tactful at 5 a.m. <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> No, but All right. everybody was happy with his dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Colonel, this home invasion gives us an excellent opportunity to talk about the use of dogs in personal defense. So I want to go over three things that a dog can do for you and your family to keep them safe at home and on the road. First, as occurred in this real-life scenario, dogs can serve as an early warning system and can wake you up if they suspect something unusual is happening. For example... Dogs have been known to save the lives of their owners by smelling smoke in the home. They bark, wake up the homeowner, giving them time to escape the fire. Dogs are also a great supplement to your electronic home alarm system. A good alarm system can detect movement inside your home, on your porch, and can also tell you when the doors are opened or the windows are broken. But a dog has a great sense of hearing and smell. Many times at my own home, our dog has barked before I heard the car drive in the driveway or someone knocking on our front door. I've learned to value and trust our dog's sense of smell and hearing. This is especially valuable the older I get. Second, the dog can also serve as a deterrent. A smart home invader avoids homes with dogs for all the reasons stated above. But there are two things home invaders are afraid of most, going to prison and getting shot by the homeowner. They understand that the presence of a dog greatly increases their chances of being discovered by neighbors or by the homeowner. And third, dogs are also useful when you're outside the home, provided they are large enough to provide a deterrent and to also be useful in a physical fight with an attacker. Ladies, if you are going on a walk or jogging in the park, it's a good idea to take your large dog with you. But you must make sure your dog is well trained so he doesn't attack innocent people or other dogs. Some home invaders are afraid of large dogs, and they'll let you pass on by because of that. Nonetheless, never assume that the presence of a large dog will make you perfectly safe. 
The dog should serve as just one layer of security in a well-thought-out system of home and personal defense. When you're out in the public, you should always have your legally carried firearm, your less-than-lethal pepper spray or gel, as well as a heightened state of awareness. This Los Angeles Army vet did a great job, but the dog was awesome as well. Pet and owner were a great team, and Frontlines of Freedom salutes them both. Yes, indeed we do.